until the publishing industry adopts some way to make images in a book magically come to life once you open it, as they do in the Harry Potter movies. Authors must think of some other way to present illustrations that are best seen in action. We came up with this idea of a video collection complementary to our book series The World Inside and Around a Beehive. Following is its next episode that offers a closer look at the pollen collection and packaging techniques used by honeybees as we trace pollen's transformation from the microscopic grains on flowers' anthers into the bee bread. Pollination plays a very important role in nature, and many people are well aware of that. Some plants rely on the wind to spread their pollen around. Just shake a branch and it gets airborne, looking much like a dust cloud. Much less pollen is produced by plants pollinated by insects. But it is more valuable and usually contains bigger grains of diverse shapes and colors. The variety of their forms can be observed under the microscope only, whereas dominant colors become visible when a honeybee forager packs the grains into the pellets. Anyone who had a chance to watch bees visiting flowers must have seen that they often appear to be all coated in pollen. And yet, the detailed understanding of how bees form pollen pellets remains a mystery even to most beekeepers. We've managed to record this rare footage that shows how it is done in real time. This flower must have produced too much pollen for the bee to collect in one attempt, so she chose to hover above it and compact the pellets right in the air by brushing the pollen grains moistened with nectar to the outside of the hind legs. She performs these motions so quickly that they are hard to follow. In a sequence of continuously repeated leg movements, the resulting pollen pellets grow in size but do not fall off thanks to the special hairs on the bee's legs that serve as some kind of a pollen basket. This is how the process of collecting pollen and forming it into the typical pellets looks like. Each time a bee returns to her hive with the new batch, she brings two small pieces of equal size. With one only, or if they were different by mass, it would be more difficult for her to fly. Pollen's size and color allow a knowledgeable person to tell pretty accurately what plants bees were visiting at the time. Back in the hive, the bee brushes her pollen off into the comb cell reserved for it. By the way, this footage showing how she does it is also quite unique. Even with much focus and determination, it is not that easy to catch a moment like this on camera. The delivered pollen is then processed by worker bees. They have to literally use their heads to compact it firmly into the comb cell. Once a cell is filled by about two-thirds of its volume, bees add a layer of honey and then cover it with a beeswax cap. No direct contact with air makes the contents less prone to spoiling. As a result, such cells work like a miniature farm silo towers that are still used in agriculture to store silage. Pollen dough, kneaded and packed by bees in honeycombs, turns there into a distinctly unique product called bee bread. Without it, normal bee brood development would be impossible and the whole colony would perish. Bee bread is also known as a very nutritious food supplement for humans. Pollen is produced by plants in huge quantities year after year. Some of the beekeepers collect it for direct consumption or to sell. Valuable benefits of adding pollen and especially bee bread to a healthy diet were shown in a number of research studies. But for the vast majority of population, this product remains rather exotic. People watch indifferently as these unaccounted natural reaches come and go with the flowers, even though it takes just one or two honeybee colonies to get plenty of pollen or bee bread and enjoy them for all their true health benefits.